In this video, I will show you how to create a new React application. So first, it is necessary to check that Node.js is installed on your computer. To do this, we can go to the command prompt and you can type node-version. So in my case, we can see that node is installed and this is the version that I have. So if node is not installed, then we can go to the browser and we can go to node.js.org. And here we can see that we have two available versions. The LTS version is the recommended version, so we can download it and you can install it. Also, I will use VS Code, so if you don't have it, we can download it from this URL. Now let's create a new React application. So I will create it in Documents. And here I already created this folder called React Projects. So just here I will create the new application. So we need to open the command prompt. So just here we can type CMD. Then here we have to type npx, create React app. Then the name of the application. I will just call it web app. Let's press enter. Now the application is created successfully after about 3 minutes. So let's close this window. And here we have the new folder of the application. So let's open it. And because I don't like to use a git, I will just delete this hidden folder. Now let's close this folder. Let's go to VS Code. And let's open the React application from VS Code. So here we can click on open folder, then the folder is available in documents, into react projects, and let's select it, then select folder. So this is our application. It contains the node modules, which contains the dependencies of our application, and we don't need to modify it. Then we have the public folder. So this application is called single page application because it contains a single HTML file which is index.html and it is available in the public folder. Then we have the source folder. So this folder contains several files but we only need index.js. So let's select all the files except index.js. And let's delete them. Now let's open index.js. So because we deleted several files, let's delete the import statements of the files that we have deleted. So let's delete these import statements. Let's delete all of this code. And because we deleted the app component, we don't have this element anymore. So let's delete it. Now let's create a new GSX element. So we can create it just here. Let's call it content. Then let's create the content that we want to display in the browser. So here let's add parentheses. Then let's create a div. Then let's display the title of this page. So let's create an H2 element. And let's write some text. Then let's create an horizontal separator. Also, we can write a paragraph. So what we have here is a GSX element. It is JavaScript and it is very similar to HTML. Now let's render this variable. So we can display it just here. And because this is a JavaScript variable, we have to display it between brackets. Now let's save the file. And to run the application, we have to go to Terminal, then New Terminal. Then we have to type npm start. And we obtain this page. So here we have the title of the page. We have the horizontal separator. And this is our paragraph. So because we added br at the end of the first line, we can see that we have two lines. 
So instead of creating a simple variable that contains the GSX element, we can create a component that renders the element. We can either create a function component or a class component. So now let's create a function component. Let's call it up. So for the moment, this is a simple JavaScript function. And to make it a component, it is necessary to return a GSX element. So here let's add return. And let's return this element. So let's cut it and let's paste it just here. We can also add a new text to this paragraph. So let's write this is a function component. Now let's delete this variable. And let's use this component to render this element. So we can delete this. And let's create the up element. So we can either use this syntax. So here we have the open tag and the close tag. Or also because this is an empty element, we can use the self-closing tag. So we can delete this. And just here we can add slash. Let's save the file and let's go to the browser. And here we have the new interface. We can see that this is a function component. Now, instead of using a function component, let's create a class component. So let's create a JavaScript class. Let's call it C like class app. And of course, we have to extend the component class of React. So when I write component, I have this suggestion, which is a class from React. Let's press enter to import it. And here we can see that this component has been imported. So what we have here is a simple JavaScript class. And to make it a React component, we have to implement the render method. Then in this method, we have to return a GSX element. So let's copy the return statement of the function component. And let's paste it just here. Then let's update this text. So here let's write this is a class component. Now let's render this component. So here we have just to write C app. Let's save the file. So here we can see this is a class component. So in React, we can either use function components or class components. But because function components are more practical, I prefer to use them. So here let's use the function component and let's delete the class component. Also, let's delete component from the import statement. Let's save the file. Now I will show you how to use Bootstrap in the React application. So let's go to the browser. And here let's type Bootstrap. Let's go to the first link. Then Docs. Then let's add Bootstrap, CSS and JavaScript from the CDA. So this line allows us to add the Bootstrap CSS from the CDN and this one allows us to add Bootstrap JavaScript. So let's copy this. Then public, then index.html. And just before the end of the head, we can paste the statement. Then let's include the Bootstrap JavaScript. So let's copy this line and we will add it just before the end of the body tag. So we can add it just here. Let's save the file and let's close it. Now I will show you how to convert HTML into GSX. So let's create the navbar of this application. Let's create a new component. Let's call it navbar. Then let's return a GSX element. 
Then let's find the source code of the navbar from bootstrap. So here we can find navbar. It is under components. So it is just here. Then let's copy the source code that allows us to obtain this navbar. So here we can see that we have an HTML code. Let's copy it. And let's paste it in the return statement. Then we need to replace JavaScript keywords with their equivalents. So class becomes class name and for becomes HTML4. So let's replace class with class name. We can select all the repetitions of class equal and we have to click on Control Shift L. So like this, all class equal are selected and let's write class name equal. Then all GSX elements should be closed. So if we have an empty HTML element, we should close it. In this example, we have HR, which is an empty element. So let's close it using the self-closing tag. Then we have the input element, which is an empty HTML element. So we need also to close it. We can also use the self-closing tag. And now we have a correct GSX code. So now let's use this component. Let's add it to the app component. But here we can see that we have an error. This is because the app component is returning two GSX elements, the navbar and this div. So to fix this, we can either put these two elements into a div or also we can put them into a fragment. So now let's create a fragment. So what we have here is a fragment. This is the open tag and this is the closing tag. So let's cut the closing tag and let's put it just here. And here we can see that we don't have the error anymore. Let's save the file. And we obtain this navbar. Another way to convert an HTML code into GSX is to use an online converter. So here we can type HTML to GSX. We can go to this link, for example. Let's delete the HTML code and let's paste the source code of the navbar from Bootstrap. And this is the corresponding GSX code. Now let's create the footer of this application. So let's create another component. Let's call it footer. Then let's return the GSX element. So here we can return a div that contains the name of the application. Here we have some bootstrap classes, so we will display this text in the center of the page. We have some paddings, we have a top border, and this is for the background color. Also we have a top margin. Now let's render this component. So let's add it to the app component, just after the div. Let's save the file and we obtain this footer. Instead of creating all the components into a single file, we can create them into multiple files and we can import them. So now I will show you how to import the components. So in the source folder, let's create a new folder where we will create the different components. Let's call it components. Then here, let's create the first component, which will be the footer of this application. So we can make a right click, the new file, and let's call it footer.js. Then let's move our footer from the index file to the footer file. So we can copy all of this. And let's paste it just here. Now we need to export this component. We can either use the default export or the named export. If we use the default export, we can export a single component per file. 
But if we use the name it export, we can export any number of components. So because for the moment we have a single component into this file, we can use the default export. To use the default export, just here we can write export default. So what we have here is a default export. Let's save the file. And let's import this component. So just here we have to write import, then the name of the component, then from, and the file. So because we have a default export, when we import it, we can give it any name. So we can call it footer as the name of the component, or also we can call it my footer. Both are correct. So because I called it my footer here, I should call it my footer just here as well. Let's save the file. And we have the same result. So let's call it footer. And here we have to call it footer as well. Let's save the file. Now let's do the same thing with the navbar. So let's cut the navbar from here. Let's create a new file under components. Let's call it navbar.js. Then let's paste the code. Let's export it by default. Let's save the file. Then let's import it. So because VS Code already has the IntelliSense functionality, we have this suggestion. Let's press Enter. Let's save the file. And we have the same result. Now instead of using the default export, I will show you how to use the named export. Using the named export, we can export any number of components from the same file. So in the components folder, let's create a new file. Let's call it layout.js. Then let's move the navbar and the footer into this file. Let's paste it here. And to use the named export, we need just to delete default. So export without default means that this is a named export. Let's do the same thing with the footer. And let's delete default. Let's save the file. So we can save this file. Let's save this one. And let's delete the footer and the navbar files. Now let's import the navbar and the footer. So we can delete this. Then let's write import. And because we have a named export, when we import the components, we have to provide the same name of the components. Also, we have to write the components between brackets. So first we need to import the navbar. Let's press enter. And we can see that the file has been added. And because we have also the footer, we have to add comma, then the name of the component. Let's save the file. And we have the same result.